Now I'm sure that if you've been learning JavaScript for any time, you've probably heard of or seen React in some capacity, but you maybe haven't really dove into it yet and are really confused as to what React actually is, why it's so important, and why so many people are talking about it. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be covering all of that and so much more so you can fully understand what React is and figure out if it's the right thing for you to learn. Let's get started now. And before we get started, I have an absolutely huge announcement that I want to make, and that is the React course that I've been working on for the last few months is finally in the last few stages of production and will be releasing on September 10th of this year in just a couple weeks from when this video comes out. So if you haven't already signed up for the list to be notified when the course comes out, make sure you go down below in the comments or description, click on the link that I'm going to leave there, and that is going to allow you to sign up for the email list to get notified when the course releases and also get a huge discount that no one else is going to get except for the people that sign up for that email list. And if you're from the future and you're watching this video after the course releases, you can click the link down below and actually go and buy the course if it's something you're interested in. And I promise you, promise you that this course is definitely worth it. It's taken me so much time and it's so much better than any of the YouTube videos I've created so far. So it is definitely worth your money. So with that out of the way, let's actually jump into the video, which is what is React. So instead of trying to come up with my own fancy description of what React is, I would figured we'd just go straight to the React website and it'll tell you exactly what React is. And as you can see, it's a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. Yep, but that's pretty much all React is, but it's so much more than that at the same time. While yes, React is there to make building user interfaces incredibly easy and really intuitive, especially when you're building complex interfaces, it really does a lot more than that. It actually kind of shifts the mindset of how you're supposed to think about programs to be less about the workflow and more about being component and state-based, which we're gonna talk about later in this video about how you can think about things in components, which is the most important part of React. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see that it's declarative. So normally when you're writing JavaScript, you write a bunch of code to select some elements, and then you actually change those elements. For example, you change the inner text to add some extra HTML, whatever it is that you need to do, hide, show things randomly. But all of that is done through events and it's not really done declaratively. In React, what you do is you actually write what you want your HTML to look like. And you'd say, if the state is like this, do this one thing. And if the state is something else, do something else. If we just scroll down here a little bit, you can see that inside of React, you have these things called components, which is this code in here. And all it's doing is returning some HTML for you. And this HTML depends on certain things. In this case, it depends on some name that you pass to the component. So for example, we passed it the name of Kyle. You can see that it's changing over here to be hello Kyle. And that's the nice thing about React is we didn't have to change our component, our HTML. It just knows to change itself when we pass it something different. That's really the power of it being declarative. And then like I've talked about a little bit already, it's component based, which is really the most important thing about React. All of the major front end frameworks that you can talk about, Angular, React, Vue, Svelte, whatever it is, they're all component based at the root of it. And that's essentially breaking out your code into small components. For example, here we have a hello message component. And all it is is a simple message over here. It's a very small broken out component that you can build your application out of by putting all of the different components together into smaller and smaller pieces that grow into something larger. So really what React is, is it's a library that allows us to not only write our HTML and how we want it to interact with our state, but it also allows us to manage that state inside of our application as well as to do a bunch of other stuff related to state and rendering of our user interface and user interaction of our website. In order to reinforce this component-based thinking, I'm going to take a look at an example of Google search page to show you how it can be broken down into components and written using React. So here I just have a basic Google search page for when you search for React and all the different results that you're getting back. And with component-based design, what you need to do when you look at something is to think about how can I break this into reusable parts of code. So you really want to look at things in your page that are the same and repeat it over and over again. As you can see here, these search results sections for React, Facebook React, and React Web Framework, all of those are actually kind of just repeated the same exact thing. And if we go forward, you can see I've actually highlighted these different sections in red because we know that these different red sections are essentially like a search result component. This component contains a title, which shows up in this blue, purpley color. You have the link, which is green, as well as a short description of that actual web page. And each one has the exact same thing as you can see. But something else that you may not notice is this bottom section where it says tutorial and getting started. That is also actually part of the exact same component. It's part of that search result component. 
but those sections, tutorial and getting started, are also just their own search component. That's why I've highlighted them in red here. So this main search component, React, a JavaScript library for building user interfaces, it contains its own components that are search components. It contains essentially the same exact component as itself twice in here. You can see we have this tutorial section and this getting started section. And you'll notice they're slightly different. For example, they don't have this green link section and they also have extra information at the bottom of some of them. But that's okay. These components contain different state essentially. You pass different things to that component and the component itself stays exactly the same, but it knows based on the different information you give it to render itself differently. That's really the great power about React. Also, if we go a little bit further, we can see all these icons up here share a very similar pattern. So we can highlight those as their own components. As you can see, they have an icon on the left-hand side and some text on the right-hand side. And you may also notice that this all one has a big underline underneath of it to say that it's the active one inside the list. And again, it's the same component as all the other ones, but it's actually passed different information so it renders itself differently. Again, that is the great power of React, being able to render something differently based on the state that you give it and having the component itself always stay exactly the same. Now, one other thing I wanna do is actually look at one last component that you may not really realize is a component by looking at this page, and that's this card component. As you can see over here, we have this big card with the nice outlined box, and this people also ask section is again a card with that outlined box. So if we go forward, I've highlighted those in green so that they're easier to see for us, and you may think that these are very different from each other. For example, the content inside of this green card on the right is very different from the content on the green card on the left, but that's okay because this green card component essentially is just defining an outline around the component and that's it. Just that gray bordered outline can be its own component. A component doesn't have to be big and it doesn't have to be exactly the same as some other component visually. They can look completely different and still be the same component because they may have other components inside of them. For example, this right hand side you can see has this React Books section and this People Also Search For section and those are also their own components which are contained inside this card component and these little icons with text under them are again components inside of other components. And when you're looking at React applications, what you'll notice is instead of being one giant JavaScript file that contains a bunch of different code inside of it, what you're going to find is you have a bunch of really small JavaScript files, which contain just a little bit of code for an individual component. For example, this gray card border is one component. This icon text section right here, another component. A list of those is another component. So it makes your code so much easier to follow and read because it's a bunch of small files instead of one massive file. It's also really easy to plug and play different things together. For example, if I wanted to remove this React Books section, all I do is remove that component from the parent component that it's inside of and boom, it's completely gone. Also, as you can see, we use the same green card border to actually put this section over on the right and this section on the left inside of it but they're completely different as I talked about earlier. So what we're able to do is just add in different components in the one on the left, we have this list-based component. And on the right, we have this more detail-oriented component. It really doesn't matter what these things are called, just that you know that they're different components inside the same sections. So now that we know a little bit about what React is and the whole component-based, state-based idea, why exactly would you use this over just writing out some JavaScript? I mean, isn't it more difficult to think about your application as all these small components that you then have to glue together? It's like building a Lego structure when instead you could just buy it already built. It seems more difficult. But the nice thing about building things with components and with those Lego components as opposed to building something pre-built or very custom is that if you want to change a Lego structure, you just remove a Lego and put a new Lego in its place and it still works just fine. Everything else works the same. But if you have something that's one giant piece all built together, one giant plastic thing, for example, if you want to change a small bit of it, you have to completely dig into and destroy the entire piece and then patch it back up with something else that you want. And that is way harder to do. So with React, it's so much easier to make small incremental changes to your application without having to worry about breaking things outside of the larger scope of the single component you work on. You just remove that component and then add a new component. Essentially, you change only the small thing you want to change and you don't have to mess with changing everything else in your application. Also, something great about React is it allows you to actually re-render your application every time your state changes automatically. I don't know about you, but if you've ever built something like a to-do list, and every time a user adds a to-do, you want to add that to-do to the list and then make sure everything displays properly. Well, in normal JavaScript, that's a real pain to do. You have to select the list, you have to add the to-do to that list, you have to make sure it renders properly, show all the HTML, blah, 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 blah. It is absolutely terrible to do, 
especially when you start to get more and more complex with more nesting and more complex interactions. With React, this is incredibly easy to do. Imagine you have a state that contains your to-dos, you have an array of two to-dos. And what you want to do when you add a new to-do is just add it to that state. Now you have three to-dos in your state, and React says, okay, your state changed, I'm going to re-render your list of to-dos, and now you can see all three of your to-dos. You didn't have to write any code to re-render that React state. React just took care of it for you. That is incredibly nice to have, because I know when I'm writing JavaScript code, just vanilla normal JavaScript, all the time, I forget to refresh or re-render my application when some form of state changes, and it leads to tons and tons of bugs for me. So having React take care of that for me is incredibly nice because I don't have to use the mental capacity to think about when to re-render. React just does it for me every single time, and it does it when it should do it, which is perfect. So if I haven't already sold you on the fact that React is absolutely amazing and you should definitely learn it, just know that most companies out there are going to be using some front-end framework. Whether it's React, Angular, or Vue, it doesn't really matter. As long as you learn one of the three, you're going to be so much farther ahead than many other people applying for jobs. And right now, React is by far the most popular and fastest growing of these frameworks. So that's why I highly recommend you learn React as your first front-end framework. Not only is it the most similar to JavaScript, just plain JavaScript, so when you're coming from just plain JavaScript to React, it's a much easier transition. All you have to do is change your mind to think about components, and that's really the only main difference. While if you go to Angular or Vue, they have their own magical way of writing things that does a lot of stuff for you behind the scenes, but it requires you to not only learn component-based thinking, but also to learn the Angular way of doing things or the Vue way of doing things. So if you start with React, I think it's easier because it's just plain JavaScript, and all you really have to think about is components, and the React way of doing things is just writing normal JavaScript, so it's going to be much more familiar for you. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, my Learn React Today course is launching September 10th. So if you're interested in fast tracking your React learning experience and learning everything you need to learn about React in just one single day, then I highly recommend you click on the link in the description and comments below to go sign up for the course because it's going to make learning React so much easier for you. I know I wish I had this course when I was learning React because it took me so long to actually learn React. But with this course, like I said, you can do it in just one single day, which is incredible compared to most other courses. And with that shameless plug out of the way, I want to say thank you very much for watching the video this far, and I hope you have a great day.